this is Anthony with you, the Italian Bible believing Jew, and welcome back to another video. And this one's going to be entitled, Why No Church? This may shock some people. In the past, many knew the church building as my second home. In fact, I was so committed to my local church that some people have even called me a preacher boy, priest, Jesus, church boy, church. Wow, I find that all those titles funny now. <laughs> uh, that was all through high school and stuff like that. Now you might be thinking, what? Why? What happened? Did something bad happen? These are the questions I'd get from people when I tell them I don't go to the church building anymore. Some bad things have happened, just to make things clear. But here is a list of five reasons why I left the church building. Just five. First, what I call the cell group. It was either debate sessions or open discussions. Seems like everybody knows all the answers like they profess, you know. I've had to ask myself, are they real friends or cell group mates? It's funny, people seem to know me. They have a document in their mind of opinions, of course, about me as long as their arm. When in reality, they don't know me at all. I believe God has shown me an ugly side to Christianity, or churchianity, <laughs> that has shocked me. In all of these, I guess it's eight churches now that I've been a member of, or a part of, the same routine and attacks have taken place. The members, Sunday school teachers, song leaders, choir director, ushers, deacons, and even the pastor himself, as long as you'll obey their rules, do what they say, talk like they do, and act like they do, they'll be your best friend. But as soon as you learn something from the Bible that goes against the church flow of tradition, they turn on you like a pack of wolves. And when that happens, the elderly members especially will hang around the church and hang around the telephones. They invite the new members or visitors over to their little fellowships, you know, their little parties. You know, the generous hospitality and generosity that they offer. And then the statements start. Oh, here is some of our wonderful food to make you feel right at home. And did you know about this? Did you hear what the pastor was talking about this morning? And can you believe what she said in her lesson? Now, oh, now, now I know we don't need to be talking about other people, but I know certain things I just need to share. Blah, 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 blah. I have actually experienced this. Oh yeah, man, they give their long titles for their, you know, denominational titles. Premillennial, pre-tribulational, soul-winning, Bible-believing, rightly dividing, Baptistic, independent folks. I've seen these people. Professing Christians are some of the meanest devils on the face of this earth. Not all of them are mean, thank God. But I would say, from personal observation, at least 90% of them. Reason number two. Service, obligation, or excitement. Why can't I be like David and be glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord? Psalms 122.1 Like I stated before, I've been a member of some eight churches in my life, and the excitement only lasted for about two months. It's because reality really set in. I am tired of pastors bending people's ears off and lecturing them how they need to be here for every Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, choir practice, Soul winning time. I see my video about soul winning, what, what a cult it is. Wednesday night prayer meeting and visitation time. That whole list. I believe that people should be active in a local church. Don't get me wrong, that they're a member in. You know, that's good. That's a good thing. Because it's a good experience. But what happens is that because if you miss one or two out of that list I gave, people judge you for it. Number three, socially exiling outsiders. I've seen this happen to me so many times. Just because I'm not part of their denomination clique, or I'm not a part of their creed, belief, document, I get targeted. Oh yeah, if you don't believe me, <laughs> really stand up for God's word and you'll be targeted very fast. Been called a heretic, false teacher, heathen, non-Bible believer, deceived, lost, even an enemy of Christ. Really? This is especially bad in so-called house meetings. Let me give you an example. I was at a house meeting some time ago, and my wife was with me, and they would have a discussion on a passage. Not somebody teaching or preaching, it was more of a discussion session. That should be a red flag right there. While there is nothing wrong with those things, but you have to be careful of it turning into a heated debate. So we were going through a chapter in Revelation. The main host of the meeting always asks if there are comments or things to add of what was stated. 
I gave my voluntary addition to what was taught because he asked me if I had any comments, so I gave it, and immediately he began to scoff and laugh at what I said. My wife was there. You can ask her if you want. She'll tell you all about it. Also, when they found out that I did not believe in something they believed, I professed I did not keep the feast days because I don't believe they applied today. Nobody asked me why for our discussion. They began to immediately throw Bible passages at me without giving me an opportunity to defend myself. Imagine that. You know, wolves circling the victim. You see, what people tend to do is that most people in fake Bible-believing circles really have no intention of having a sincere discussion with you. They are only interested in just two things. Two things. One, indoctrinating people with their belief of opinions. Two, of not letting anybody question what was taught. Not at all. Point number four, reality missing. I left because... To be honest, and this is quite nauseating, but the truth is, I've learned more logical sense and reasoning from principles of God's word from some of the heathens of the world, like George Carlin, Bill Maher, and others. I reject their vulgarities, absolutely, but unfortunately, many of these so-called religious pastors don't have much sense at all. And that's about addressing issues like uh, poverty, truth about politics, double standard, injustice, the U.S., pride. I learned more logic about refuting those things than I had learned from 14 years plus of Sunday school and church services. Every church I was a member of wanted to push this agenda that we need to support the nation of Israel and the people there regardless of the sin they are involved in. Also, they pushed forward for this False teaching that America is a Christian nation and that we can turn this nation back to God. You know, all these fairy tale beliefs to motivate people. Such wishful thinking, false teaching, is poison. Lastly, reason number five. I'm not a people person. Plain and simple, I'm not a people person. You can ask my wife. She'll tell you. I'm considered an extreme introvert. When I'm around people, I lose most of my energy. Ever since God opened my eyes to keeping the Sabbath holy on Saturday, the dietary laws, etc., I found myself even more introverted. I have gone to assemblies and church services on Saturday during Sabbath, and it doesn't work for me, to be honest. I'm worn out, sometimes irritated, and I don't want to be there. I am not resting in my body, soul, and spirit the way that God intended for me to rest on Sabbath. Obviously, that doesn't apply to everybody because there are many people who enjoy going to services on Sabbath, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. So don't judge me because I'm not a people person. Did you know that nowhere in the Bible does it say I have to be in church on the Sabbath? I also had no issue with going to a church service on Sunday. Now, I prefer to go to a Sunday church service than a Saturday service. Why? Well, because the issue is that I don't rest very well on the Sabbath. Let me give a couple side points. First, people being two-faced. See these scriptures given below. God hates it, and we shouldn't do it. I've experienced a lot of people being two-faced to me in many of these assemblies. Walking with Christ is lonely. See these lists of people who were lonely. Really walking with Christ is going to be lonely at times. Brethren, if you desire to be filled with the Spirit of God and walk after Christ and His Word, be prepared for loneliness. The popular rule is, as long as we're all rowing the same way and wearing the same clothing and hairspray, etc., <laughs> then everything goes great. But let me tell you something, brethren. But you step out of that boat to go with Jesus then your world gets turned upside down. Whether you're family, church, or friends, this same crowd that patted you on the back, supported you, and applauded you, and fellowshiped with you, there will come a day that God's perfect word is going to cross their floor of tradition. If you decide to follow his word, and the same crowd will turn on you like a pack of wolves. You just watch. Just one step out of their boat. 
They're going to start running their mouth about you. They're going to be on their cell phones. They'll gossip about you on Facebook. They'll put you in the crosshairs. They'll plan to kick you out of church. They'll be two-faced to you. They'll tell people not to fellowship with you. They'll tell people to block you and unfriend you on Facebook. They'll start falsely accusing you of heresy. Oh yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Being pulled on every side. If I say the name of Jesus Christ, the Torah keepers won't fellowship with me over here. If I keep the Sabbath, the Baptists won't have me over here. If I believe the KJV, the Hebrew Roots Movement, especially, won't fellowship with me. Then if I am King James only, the Hebrew Roots Movement and many others like them won't fellowship with me over here. If I believe the Sabbath is on Saturday, Judaism and the Yah people, you know, Y-A-H, won't fellowship with me over here. If I believe the English names is just as holy as the Hebrew names, these Yah, sacred name movement people, won't fellowship with me. I feel like a ping pong ball, just bouncing between all these walls. I don't fit in anywhere, because people get upset when you don't believe exactly, I mean exactly what they do. If you disagree just a little tiny bit, they reject you. All of you listed, why don't you all shut up? I can tell you incident after incident of times that people acted all supportive of me until they learned what I believed. One pastor, in particular, for example, that married my wife and I, when he found out that we do not believe in a pre-tribulation false rapture or one saved always saved, he stated that if he knew what we really believed, he never would have married us. Wow, talk about a loving pastor. What about that? Conclusion, brethren. Now you'll understand why I don't go to church services on a regular basis anymore. Being a serious, realistic introvert, the more I am around people, the more energy I lose. I regain my energy when I am in solitude. So I decided for myself that I will not be attending any more church services on Sabbath. However, if there is a service on Sunday, I may Lord willing attend it. And I know the passage that people want to throw saying that we are not to forsake the gathering of ourselves together. However, the verse does not say how often to go. So don't pull that chunk with me. I agree that it is beneficial and edifying for brethren to gather together. But church is not the place to worship God or to receive teaching from His Word. If that is your purpose of going, you're wasting your time. The purpose of gathering together in a church service is to worship together as a single unit. Unfortunately, the way many of these services function is that if you disagree with any of their main creed doctrines, you have to shut up and keep your mouth shut. If you don't, they'll kick you out of there faster. Then you can say their denomination creed three times. You know why? Because they're all inclusive of you and want to so-called love on you and fellowship with you, but if you question or challenge any of their beliefs, you're gone. That's a cult. So, if you do go to a church service and these things that I have listed does not happen, praise the Lord! Great! I've been searching for an assembly like that too, but they're hard to find. So, I am praying for God to provide some kind of assembly where these things will not occur. I'm not looking for a perfect church. I'm looking for people to be honest, not lie, and be straightforward and direct. Is that too much to ask? No. So, brethren, love the Lord Jesus Christ, fear God to keep His commandments, and read and believe the King James Bible. Thanks.